Mr. Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. LaTourette. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I want to thank my friend and classmate, Mr. Jones from North Carolina, for yielding me the time and also for his leadership on this issue. And, and but for had the president followed his very respectful letter uh, of January the 10th, we wouldn't be having this debate uh, on this uh, resolution drafted by the Democratic leadership. Mr. Speaker, like most Americans, I desperately want us to succeed in Iraq. And I was heartened by the Iraqi study group report. And I was heartened when the president of the United States said we were going to take a fresh approach in Iraq. I fear, however, that this is not a fresh approach. Uh, this is more of the same. I also fear that our course of more of the same could lead to the deaths of more Americans. I know that the president believes in his heart that this surge will succeed. I like and respect the president of the United States, but we tried last year a surge of about 12,000 troops and operation together forward. The result has been an escalation of sectarian violence and attacks on our troops that has been unprecedented and unrelenting. If I thought that the, president's, the presence of 21,500 additional American troops in Iraq would quell sectarian violence and stop the killing and aggression towards Americans in Iraq, I would support it. If I thought that the presence of 21,500 new American troops would cause the Maliki government to get their house in order and their country in order and make the Iraqis step up and do their duty to protect their country, I would support it. Instead, we find ourselves with an Iraqi security force that has more time and training than the young people that we are sending from our country to defend theirs, yet they can't get the job done. It is time to ratchet up diplomacy, make the, make the Iraqis accountable for their own security, and kick off the training wheels that we have tethered them to. Even the Pentagon has warned that an escalation of troops in Baghdad could fuel the jihadists, cause an uptick in attacks, and embolden al-Qaeda even more. What shakes me to the core, however, is that we plan to send these additional troops into harm's way without adequate equipment and vehicles, General Speaks, the Army's Deputy Chief of Staff for Force Development, re recently laid out a bleak scenario, a surge without enough armor kits and not enough up-armored trucks. Others within the military add that there won't be enough armored Humvees, which even as fortified as they are, offered no match for the destruction and the power of the IEDs that are used against our troops. One senior Army official speculated that the only way, the only way that there will be enough Humvees for this surge is if five brigades of up-armored Humvees fall out of the sky. This prognostication takes me back to what I thought was most, one of the most insensitive remarks uttered by a public official during the course of this war, the former Secretary of Defense in 2004, who indicated, you go to war with the army you have, not the army that you want. Mr. Speaker, I can't believe that 26 months later, we're going into a surge with what we've got instead of what we need. It's not fair to the men and women already in Iraq, nor those on their way, and the costs are too high, both in American lives and also the toll on the American spirit. Make no mistake, like all Americans, I support our troops and am eternally grateful for their courage and their sacrifice, and I hope and I pray that we succeed in Iraq. Some of the troops that will be part of the surge are already in Iraq. I wish our president had chosen a different path, but he did not. I wish my Democratic colleagues had chosen a different approach and allowed my party to offer alternative language, but they did not. It is what it is, but that does not ch change my resolve that this surge is not in the best interest of this nation. May God bless our country, our troops in the field, and the President of the United States, and I yield back the balance of my time.